Hi, I'm Barry Ostrowski. At Barnabas Health, we believe citizens need to be informed about the important health care issues affecting their lives. That's why we're proud to support health care programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners on public television. Funding for this special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by New Jersey's credit unions, banking you can trust, the New Jersey Education Association, Barnabas Health, Life is Better Healthy, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, Fedway Associates, NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan, Turn a Dream into a Degree, and by the Northeast Regional Council of Carpenters. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com. And by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. See, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. Man, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. You see a lot of folks behind me. You're wondering, where are we? We're at the Commerce and Industry Association Annual. This is the one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, legislative dinner, the uh, legislative dinner they've been having for several years here. This legislative one-on-one -on -one dinner um, brings together legislators, business leaders, and others to talk about the issues that matter in the state of New Jersey. We talk to those legislators, we talk to those business leaders, um, property tax, the pension situation, the transportation trust fund, taxes, regulations, a whole range of issues came up tonight. Uh, to be very candid, uh, while Democrats and Republicans were invited to this annual event, disproportionately the folks who attended are on Republican. We talked to every legislator who is here tonight. You'll hear their perspective. You will also hear the perspective of others as well, and you can decide for yourself. We're at the Commerce and Industry Association, Bruce Simonoff, legislative one-on-one -on -one dinner. Let's hear with the uh, folks who are dealing with policy issues in the state of New Jersey, particularly business issues, I have to say. John, let me ask you, uh, the Commerce and Industry Association, your organization has been doing this for many years. Why bring all these legislators together with business leaders? What's the goal? I think it's easy to throw spears at one another or pick on one another saying you're not doing a great job, you're unreasonable. but. By putting an event together like this where you can do more than a sound bite, have a civilized conversation over dinner, both sides on issues get a better understanding of the challenges that the other faces. So legislators get a challenge or get a better understanding of the challenges that businessmen and women face based on what legislation gets passed or doesn't. And likewise, business executives get a better chance, better understanding of, um, of the challenges that legislators face having to integrate all the things that must be incorporated into their decision making. We're about to uh, have a very spirited, every year we do this with John, uh, I'm fortunate enough to moderate, uh, facilitate, even though it gets a little rowdy, in a good way. Yes. Um, legislators, business leaders, they say what's on their minds, and I'll moderate and facilitate that discussion. We'll do that in just a few minutes. But we decided to talk to leaders uh, on both sides of the aisle, as well as business leaders as well. What do you think the number, say, two or three issues that will come up tonight will be? We don't know what they'll be, but what do you think they'll be? Well, I can predict it's the cost of doing business in New Jersey. And it's a challenge to lower that because we're one of the highest cost states. People over and over are saying, I'm thinking about leaving, I'm considering leaving, or I'm considering expanding somewhere else. So that's the biggest challenge, I think, for, for business. And the creation of private sector jobs is really what it's all about. And so um, while it's not simple, there are ways that we can unravel some of these costs. And perhaps one of the things we'll talk about tonight are shared services and consolidation of government entities. Well, shared services, there's been a lot of talk about shared services, consolidation of government. But John, respectfully, what does that have to do with keeping businesses in the state? Well, if you can lower the overall cost of living and working here, I mean, every element of the cost of doing business here, the cost of living here affects business. If property taxes escalate, then that puts an upward pressure on salaries. What would that have to do with shared services or merging government? Well, if you have, let's say, two, two school districts that are adjacent to one another, one superintendent retires, either of those adjacent districts can approach the other and say, you know, is there a, a chance, a reasonable uh, approach that we can take to share that superintendent? And by doing so, share 
bear the costs. Now, and that goes across the board to chiefs of police, fire chiefs. Uh, you need the teachers in the classroom. You need the policemen and policewomen in the, on the beat in the patrol cars. But you don't need that level of oversight. Other states, Delaware, for example, runs with a county uh, set of superintendents. We could do that in New Jersey and have 21 superintendents instead of 600 plus. Well, well John, why do you think we haven't made more progress uh, you're smiling on the issue of consolidating government, having fewer school districts, having fewer municipalities, which in fact some argue would decrease property taxes because you have fewer public employees. Why do you think we haven't made more progress? I think there's two reasons. One is people are rationally ignorant unless it hits Rationally them. ignorant? What does that mean? They don't pay attention until it actually hits them. They see their property tax bill. They say, holy cow, I'm retiring in five years. Let me look to Florida, Delaware, or some other state, Arizona, where I can lower my costs in retirement. So until it hits them personally, they can become ra not paying attention. And the other is just the political reality of it. Um, I don't want to be too much of an uh, economic theorist here. However, if the costs are diffuse among so many people and the benefits are concentrated, superintendents, police chiefs, um, levels of government, then the people that really have a vested interest and are going to benefit from that are going to make those arguments. And the people among whom all those costs are divided are really not going to pay attention, not even know why. Almost like death by a thousand cuts. John, let me ask you, um, we've talked many times on Capital Report and one-on-one -on -one and we're here at the Commerce and Industry Association event, annual event where legislators, business leaders get together to talk about a whole range of issues. Got to ask you, the rest of 2015, the top most important issue we need to deal with in New Jersey is? Make sure people want to stay here. So you need a bipartisan leadership event, meaning that all of us, the leaders, have to tell New Jersey we're working together, not against each other. You have to start by sending the right message. Then you have to look at the incredible tax burden on your average citizen and you say, does that really work, New, New Jersey? Are we competitive with other states? If we don't pass those two um, goals, if we don't get there, we have a problem. Samuel, one specific concrete policy change that you really believe would have a significant impact, a positive impact on our economy and creating jobs is? I think we have to have less mandates on the municipalities, and we have to relieve a burden. One burden would be we have these large payouts to public employees, uh, and it's unfortunate. What do you mean payouts? Well, if you're, let's say, a policeman or a fireman, and over the last 25 years you were not sick, or you're a, uh, a principal, you might get four or $500,000 of a payout. Those kind of incredible burdens on the tax base we just can't, we can't afford to do those. In order to protect the uh, life of New Jersey as a state, we have to start reducing the property taxes in the state. That's just one of those many things we have to change. Assemblyman, let me ask you, um, most important issue you believe New Jersey's facing for the remainder of this year, what is it? Well, the pension system. Uh, obviously, we're in trouble on that. We haven't funded our pensions over a number of years, and now we're faced with lack of resources and very difficult times. Some of your Republican colleagues, when I asked that question, said, you got to do away with the estate and inheritance tax. That's the number one issue, you say? Well, that's a big issue, but I think, I think the other issues are even more important. Working people have to have something to believe in, and I believe that the pension system that was promised to our public employees should be kept. Obviously, it's going to be a difficult promise to keep, but we have to work on, on solving it. When I interviewed the governor about this, when others have interviewed the governor about this, he has said, look, I'd love to do it. I know it's the law. He was involved in it with Democratic legislators who helped make it happen. He said, we don't have the money. We just don't have the money. You say? I say he's right. We don't have the money, but we have to work on putting revenue in the system. The economy is bad. We've uh, had Atlantic City collapsing. We've got a lot of the problems with our transit system, transportation system. So it's a, it is a resource problem. Uh, but we can't work on these things at the last minute as a crisis, Steve, as you know. In New Jersey? Uh, well, you know, you were in the legislature. You know what happens. The Why do we do it at the last minute? Because everything operates on a crisis basis, you know. Let's have a vision. Let's sit down and talk about a strategy. Let's have off-campus caucuses uh, to talk about these major issues when it's not occurring at this time. And the number one question on everyone's mind is what can we do to make sure New Jersey can compete on a national stage for affordability and jobs. And I think that has to be on every legislator's mind. One action that you believe would help us compete more effectively, what would it be? I think if we rework the school funding formula, 
it would be a huge start, and that's being as a woman who represents more than one Abbott, former Abbott, non Abbott. Um, I think the district, to be clarified, we're talking about uh, 31, I believe, 31, 31 school districts at the courts of New Jersey, the Supreme Court has said they will get extra funding because they need extra funding, um, disproportionately urban districts, you say? I say they picked them in 1986. I represent some districts like Asbury Park that absolutely need the funding, but the way we work the formula, while those districts have depopulated, we have a hold harmless agreement in that court order. So that's how you get to 36 a kid, right? Then I have other districts like Freehold Borough in my district. Those kids are at 85% free and reduced lunch. They're at 11 grand a kid right now. So I think, and my property taxes there are through the roof on those borough property taxpayers. So I think taking a look at the way we fund something, since that's a lot of the money the state spends, right? That's school funding. I think that has to be part of it. How would that affect businesses, whether they stay in the state or not, with what the school funding formula is? Well, it would certainly affect property taxes, which is one thing we hear from businesses a lot about, is their cost of doing business in New Jersey. And I think it would be a start to having a realistic economic discussion about this state, right? How much are we paying? What are we paying for? I think one of the things you hear about right now a lot from the business community is the transportation trust fund. And nobody's interested in talking about the studies that have come out, and I know there's been some back and forth on why New Jersey's so much higher per mile than everybody else, but I think that's the first discussion you have to have before you talk about throwing more money into those coffers. Why are we greater than New York? Why are we greater than Hawaii? Places that it would obviously cost a lot of money to do business. So I think we have to have those hard discussions. Unfortunately, a lot of people in Trenton, I don't think, are very interested in those discussions. Going back to the, uh, the priority of, of helping business, keeping business in New Jersey, and keeping people in New Jersey. Uh, I also, and I'm a Democrat, but I also have met people, I've spoken to people uh, in my age group in uh, the county of Bergen who are saying uh, they, they, you know, they reach a certain age and they're going to move back south or move out because they just don't want to deal with the, uh, the, uh, the stress of paying taxes and also trying to ensure they have a, quali a, a decent quality of life. Where you can go to another state such as South Carolina and North Carolina, where it's, it's just a little easier to maintain a good quality of life. The infrastructure is there. It's like in Charlotte. The infrastructure is there. It's a small city, has an airport, and it's just an easier life. So we have to fix that in New Jersey, and we have to fix it soon. I recognize we have, a, we have budgetary issues here. I understand that. But as we try to come back uh, and make this state uh, a place that people want to be to live and work, we have to address that that issue when it comes to taxes and also, um, um, well, it, uh, taxes basically. Taxes. Well, I mean, stay on to the issue of taxes. I spoke to Senate President Steve Sweeney, as has many other uh, reporters, journalists have talked to Senate President Sweeney, and he says, "Look, we need the millionaires tax increased over a million bucks. We have to raise more revenue from those who earn a million dollars or more." Most Democrats I talk to say the same thing. You say? I, I think that there's something there. Uh, I've not seen the numbers with that, meaning uh, how much over, over a million, it's over a million dollars tax. Over, yes. Over a million dollars, you get a certain percentage. How long, will, it, will that sunset in three years, maybe? Say oh, it yeah. does, say it does. Say it's not forever. Well, it had to be a sunset for me. It had, to, it had to be a sunset for me even to consider it. Because I think, if we're asking the richest folks in this state to chip in, to take care of uh, the, those who are less fortunate, then it has to sunset. And we have to give them something then. And what do you we, mean by that? Well, if, if they're going to be paying a higher tax rate, then what do they get in return? There has to be something in return. This is about compromise here. What can we offer them? And I don't know what that something is yet, because uh, I've, I've not been directly involved in that. But uh, uh, I, recognizing that we have to increase our revenues, understood. Recognizing that uh, we have to reduce or eliminate some, some taxes that are uh, onerous, understand that. So uh, if we do this millionaire's tax, this certain percentage over a million dollars, what can we offer them to, uh, to appease them until this thing sunsets? Marty, we're talking to business leaders, legislators, others here at the Commerce and Industry Association annual event where we come together and talk about these things. Number one issue facing New Jersey is? Uh, state and inheritance tax. Uh, it really is a negative. Uh, it impacts our elderly. It forces people to leave the state. Uh, we see a capital uh, leaving our state. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, it is a deterrent. And... Uh, it's something that the, uh, our legislators and lawmakers have to change. And increasing taxes on millionaires, you say? No, absolutely not. We, we, do, we have enough uh, disincentives uh, for people to stay in the state, uh, and that would be just one more reason for people to leave. Yeah, but for those who argue, we all have to do our part to balance the budget, you say? Take a look at what 
our highest taxpayers are paying in the state compared to the states surrounding us, and we're far and above uh, more than those other states. So we're not competitive anymore. Uh, New York and Connecticut and other states, Pennsylvania, uh, understand what it means to keep business and uh, keep our people in the state. We have to compete with them? Yep, absolutely. Kathleen, let me ask you. A lot of people are talking about different taxes and things to move the economy. One tax that really needs to be changed that people are talking about is the inheritance tax. But you were talking about another tax. Which one is that? The estate tax. That's the tax that you pay when you die in New Jersey and your assets are over $675,000. But the, are you talking about both now, the estate and inheritance? What's the difference? The estate tax is on the total estate where the inheritance tax is on assets that pass from your estate to non-family members. So theoretically, when you die, you could actually pay an estate tax and an inheritance tax. Double tax? Yes. But I've heard talk to Democrats, Vincent Prieto, the Speaker of the Assembly we talked to. He said, we need that revenue. We can't lose all that revenue. And you say? I say we're losing revenue from people leaving the state in the income tax, the payroll tax, the sales tax, the use tax that they would have paid had they stayed here. Everything flows from the economy. All the issues that we're having, whether it's pension reform or funding any type of government program, quite frankly, we're in the trouble that we are right now because the economy simply isn't growing. One thing that will move the economy in the right direction is? Well, it's not one thing. It's a whole host of things. There's a lot of good people asking for a lot of stupid things that we keep acquiescing. We have an IQ gotcha. system. I'll give you three examples. We have, um, I, I, my understanding is you have nobody uh, in the top 100 as far as restaurants. Try to open up a restaurant in New Jersey. You open up a restaurant, the first thing you want is a liquor license. If you can find one, it's going to cost you half a million dollars. You want to open up a, a business in Bergen County, you're told right away you can only work six out of uh, seven days. Gee, that's fine. Well, if you want to have, open up that business, you're going to shy away from Bergen County. So those type of things are, are arcane and not actually moving our, our state up into the 21st century. Can't complain to your... Uh, your, uh, your uh, county commissioner, because we don't have one. We have freeholders. We're the only state in the country that we has... We shouldn't have freeholders? No, we should have freeholders that are called county commissioners. That way people know exactly the type of government that they have. So let me ask you this. The biggest obstacle we have in the state of New Jersey to moving the economy forward and creating jobs is... I think everybody's just got to take a pause... They have to think of the community at large, the entire state, as opposed to their little local colloquial interest. Whether it's Bergen County, whether it's pumping your own gas, we're one of only two states in the entire country that still... Should we be doing that? Again, that's part of the whole system. We have 48 other states that do. I had all my senior friends calling me up, complaining, please, Senator, don't vote for this if it comes for a vote. Well, what are the senior citizens doing in the other 48 states? So that, the blue laws, on and on and on. Not to mention all the rules, the taxes, and everything that we impose on people. Once they do come into the state, it's very, very difficult. That's why we're driving people out of this state. Glenn, as a business owner, what's the number one issue you want to hear tonight at the Commerce and Industry Association talked about? I'd like to see less government regulations. They're giving uh, the entrepreneurs more freedom to uh, help build their businesses. Name one that's been particularly challenging for you. In the state of New Jersey, especially, there are restrictions on doing on-site hard drive destruction, not allowing companies to destroy their private data right in front of them clarify what your business is. We provide on-site... You have to put that in context. <laughs> we provide on-site e-data destruction where we come out with uh, shredding trucks or data erasure equipment and destroy data on hard drives right at the customer's site to prevent any security leakage of data. Now, some would argue, well, the gov government's got to have reasons why they have these regulations to protect against abuses, right? And fraud and uh, data leakages... All types of cybersecurity attacks, yes. So what's the problem then? Only in New Jersey. Jersey is the only state where we're not allowed to do it on site without a Class D. All the other stuff. What's that mean, Class D? The Class D regulations put, put together by the EDEP. And in New Jersey, it is the only state in the United States that we have to have a Class D. All the other states allow us to operate freely and destroy the hard drives at the customer's locations. I have got a lot of clients, industrial clients, who can't, who can't stay in New Jersey because of the regulations. I'm an environmental practitioner, and, and the environmental regulations are really, a, uh, I'm finding a lot of companies that, that um, want to be environmentally responsible, but um, having a hard time figuring out how to do that in New Jersey. Break that down for the average persons without going into the intricacies of, of what that would mean. Give people a sense of an environmental policy, because we all want to, 
the best possible environment, but you're saying, hey, wait a minute, time out. Some of those regulations create problems for business. Name one so the average person can understand. Well, I don't want to get into details like you said, but being an environmental attorney, it shouldn't be me that has to tell folks how to comply with the regulations. In my view, a business owner with, with a reasonable staff should be able to read and understand what they're required to do. They can't? No, no. Why not? Well, because the regulations are very dense and, and they change a lot, and uh, uh, they're just difficult to interpret and read, and there's a, there's a lot of room for interpretation, and so then you get different opinions, and uh, they're just very complex. So. What does that ultimately have to do with businesses staying, leaving? Well, they try to hire folks to, that can help them in-house, but in the end, uh, they find other jurisdictions that don't have the, uh, the depth and the level and the, the minutia, for, for better term, of the regulations that, that New Jersey has. The remainder of 2015, what would you say the most significant issue we are facing in New Jersey is? Well, being that I sit on budget committee, uh, we've been concentrating very heavily on this year's budget. Uh, our main focus was really uh, the pension payment, what was going to happen there. We understand that obviously closing out fiscal year 2015, that that's probably not going to happen. Uh, so we think that there's going to be some serious adjustments coming in 2016 with um, having to make some of those pension payments and really upping that. If not, I think that the, the more time that goes on, the more we're going to be in a, in a very serious situation. Let's talk about that. What do you say to those who argue, including the governor, who has said, we'd like to make the payment, the money is simply not there? Well, I think that when, and this, was, this precedes me before I came into the assembly, when there was a negotiation that was done and both parties agreed to make a commitment, not only on the, the uh, administration side, but also on the legislative side, as to we have people that are paying in, people that are not making a lot of money and obviously made uh, sacrifices. And I think that, you know, it needs to come from the administration's part as well, that now that they need to make that, that their end of their bargain. A lot of the uh, Republicans we have spoken to have said, we need to do away with the inheritance tax, the estate tax, Get, do away with it because we're losing so many people who don't want to pay it and they go to Florida, they go to other states, you say? I understand, and I think that that's going to be a, a big priority moving forward. However, if we're looking at some of the bigger issues, some of the other issues that we have today, how is it that we're going to be able to concentrate on the inheritance tax and really remove a lot of that money from the budget? How can we be creative to really fill that gap before we move forward and, re and changing the inheritance tax? John Bramnick, uh, the speaker, uh, well, the hope to be speaker, the uh, Republican leader, uh, has said, we're not going to get the money anyway because if they leave, they're not paying that revenue, those taxes, you say? I say that I think New Jersey is in such a great geographical uh, position when it comes to our businesses and really people choosing to stay in New Jersey because of the job opportunities and a lot of the growth that we have and I think that we're going to be seeing moving forward in this state. Um, some of those that are leaving, I think they're leaving anyways. I understand that it is very costly. I myself, I, I, I get that. But I think that there really isn't a better place than New Jersey if you really want to uh, be innovative, think outside of the box, and really have some different types of opportunities because of our location. The number one issue in New Jersey right now is? Oh, a pension and transportation trust fund. Why have we made more progress on those two issues? Well, I think we need to have more cooperation between um, you know, our caucuses. You know, the follow-up is, why haven't we had more cooperation? What do you say? You know what? We're working on that. Um, I know that the leadership is working on both sides, and I'm very optimistic. I'm a, I'm a girl that has the glass half full, so I believe that we are going to be able to come to a resolution. I know it's been a problem for decades, um, but I'm very hopeful that with our leadership, I know with John Bramnick in our caucus and all of our leadership and the governor, um, we, we've been able to make great strides. And I know there's a lot of reform that needs to be done. And you know whether it's sick pay reform or reforming our schools and consolidation, um, you know municipal mergers, um, I believe it can be done. I'm very optimistic. Paul, you're one of the few uh, manufacturers left in New Jersey. I wish I were not introducing Paul in that way. It's true. Why do you think that's the case? 
I think it's a very difficult climate in New Jersey. I think there's a number of uh, reasons behind it. I think part of it is education. I think part of it is regulatory. Uh, I think uh, part of it is just a business climate in New Jersey. I mean, we're you know, uh, reportedly last in job creation. Um, I, I think that manufacturing gets a bad rap, especially in a highly populated area like New Jersey. Why do you stay? We stay because of the labor force. We stay because- have a great labor force. We really do. Uh, we're located in Patterson. We have a very good labor force. We're very central to transportation. Um, it's very easy to get in and out of the New York metro area. It's great for uh, bringing product in and out. So we, uh, we've been around for almost 47 years and uh, you stay lean and you make it work. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence and 13 for WNET. Funding for this special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by New Jersey's Credit Unions, the New Jersey Education Association, Barnabas Health, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, Fedway Associates, NJ Best the Northeast Regional Council of Carpenters, and by Gingoli Construction. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. Choosing a new family doctor can be confusing. Check with your health insurer to see which physicians near you participate with your plan. Find out which hospitals the doctor uses and who covers when the doctor is away. And remember to schedule an appointment with your new doctor in advance to fill out any paperwork without the added stress of being sick.